God's people, good morning. Welcome to Parking Lot Worship here at College Hill Moravian Church. Uh, I'm glad we are together, so to speak. Um, it's become our habit, so let's give it a whirl to greet one another this morning with the honking of the car horns. Good job. <laughs> You're getting more exuberant in that practice, yay. <laughs> Uh, it is good to be together, so thank you for joining us for worship this day. We'll do the who's who in the sanctuary this morning. You've already heard a sampling of Gwyn Michael on the organ. Uh, the Reverend Tammy Rinker from Westside Moravian Church is with us today. Uh, she'll be bringing us the message this morning. Uh, we are delighted to have a special musician with us today, Mike Saunders is here and he will uh, he will be uh, charming you with some trombone music uh, during the special music segment today and we have a fabulous technician in, in the house with us this morning uh, ben wallace is with us so thank you all for uh, making worship happen in this space um, here's a heads up on the page numbers you will need this morning our opening hymn will be 751, God of Grace and God of Glory, 751. Our liturgy will be for peace and justice, and that is on page 148. And our concluding hymn this morning will be 696, Today We, are, we All Are Called to Be Disciples, 696. And we'll announce those uh, as they come up in the rotation as well. But for now, I ask you to calm yourselves, calm your hearts, calm your mind, calm your spirits. Let's listen to the prelude as we prepare for worship. <laughs> in God's kingdom. 
and more, more than enough grace to go around. Let's worship God together. Hymn 751, God of grace and God of glory. the Holy One and bow before God on high. God has shown us what is good and what is required to do justice, to show constant love, and to walk humbly with our God. <laughs> not this the kind of worship that pleases me, says our God, to undo the bonds of injustice, to let the oppressed go free and break every yoke, 
to share bread with the hungry and shelter the homeless poor, to clothe the naked and not turn from your own people. I was hungry and you fed me, thirsty and you gave me drink, a stranger and you welcomed me, naked and you clothed me, sick or in prison and you visited me. When did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, naked and clothe you, sick or in prison and visit you? Truly I say to you, when you did it to one of the least of these, you did it to me. our sins in silence. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you.
people. Put not your trust in rulers, in mortals in whom there is no help. There will be one who will rule with integrity and govern with justice. One who will be like a shelter from the wind and a place to hide from the storm. One who will be like streams flowing in a desert, like the shadow of a giant rock in a barren land. One whose eyes and ears will be open to the needs of the people. Our God says, Here is my servant whom I strengthen, the one I have chosen, with whom I am pleased. I have filled him with my spirit, and he will bring justice to every nation. He will not lose hope or courage. He will establish justice on the earth. He will teach us what he wants us to do. We will walk in the paths he has chosen. He will settle disputes among the nations. He will arbitrate for many peoples. We will beat our swords into plowshares and our spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not lift up sword against nation. Neither will they learn war anymore. We will live in peace and no one will make us afraid. Justice will roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. And the effect of righteousness will be peace. And the result of righteousness will be quietness and trust forever. And we will abide in peaceful habitation, in secure dwellings, and in quiet resting places. We will live in peace, and no one will make us afraid. God has shown us what is good and what is required. To do justice, to show constant love, and to walk humbly with our God. Let us listen for the word of God. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out at about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, do you also go into the vineyard, and I'll pay you whatever is right. And so they went. And then he went out again at about noon, and again at three o'clock, and he did the very same. At five o'clock, he went out and found others still standing around, and he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? And they said to him, because no one has hired us. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to the manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and going to the first. Those hired about five o'clock came, and each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they'd receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. When they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, these last worked only an hour, and you made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I chose to give to the last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last.
time. If you pull up and you see laborers, you would probably pick the fit and the youngest first, no doubt. And on subsequent trips, you would probably choose the strongest of those that were left until eventually you just chose everyone, including those who were visibly sick or weak. Because on this day, everyone there had an opportunity to work. And the fact that there were still people there hopeful for work late into the day reveals their level of commitment to working, but also most likely their desperation. If there was a chance, even a slight chance that they could work, they waited for it. And on that day, eventually everyone worked. Some for a long day, and some for only part of the day. And at the end of the day, the owner had the manager pay everyone, in true biblical fashion, with the last being paid first. So the last are those that came at five o'clock. And each worker was paid a denarius, which is the usual daily wage. It's not a grand sum, just a typical wage. It will supply your needs, but not your wants. If the laborer came home with less than a denarius, it would be difficult to meet the needs of that day. Someone would not eat. And so they get paid. The ones who started at five being last get theirs. The ones who started at three being second to last get theirs, and so on and so forth until those who started early in the day finally get paid. And they all receive the normal daily wage. I want you to notice that there's only one comment in the story about the workers' response to their pay. And that's from the workers who worked all day, and they were annoyed. Even though they agreed to work for the normal wage, they became angry when they saw those who came late get the same pay. There is no comment from the workers who worked a partial day and got that denarius. Maybe they thought it was a mistake and they got out of there fast with their pay. Maybe they were surprised and they rushed home to share their good fortune. Maybe they were grateful and they thanked the manager. We just don't know. Uh, the only commentary on the pay came from those who worked all day and got the usual daily wage. So we know about the grumbling. Even though they agreed to it beforehand, it upset them when they realized that those who came late got the same. Verse 15 speaks to this. The manager says, Am I not allowed to do what I want with what belongs to me? Are you envious because I'm generous? If we had bulletins, that would be the caption. That is the caption on the front of today's bulletin. Are you envious because I am generous? Yes! Yes, we are! We're envious because he's generous. But you know what? God has a right to be generous. It is God's prerogative to be generous. We're fine when he's generous with us. It's when he's generous with others that oh, it was a little distracting. This story, however, is not only about generosity, it's also about justice. Because God is just. What is given, the pay, the denarius, not a fraction of a denarius, but a whole denarius, meets the daily need of those laborers. Every family could eat that night because they were paid a wage that would feed them. So this message, brothers and sisters, is for the poor. This is good news for the poor. A full day's wage they will eat and be provided for on this day because the owner was generous. This isn't a message for the wise and self-assured. This is a message for the poor. And Jesus has a preference for the poor. He repeatedly seeks out the widow, those who are sick, and those who are on the margins of society. 
He cares for the poor and brings good news to the poor. And we are called to do the same. Instead of being jealous because God is generous, we are called to be generous as well. We're called into an entirely different mindset of generosity and following God. Our Moravian Day of Service is an act of love toward the poor, not those just struggling with money. So poverty is not only, not only a lack of funds, Economic poverty is just one type of poverty. In this time of COVID, it's become apparent that loneliness is a very present type of poverty for many of us. But there's also poverty of spirit, poverty of physical health, poverty of awareness, poverty of space and the ability to move and travel. We could go on all day with all the different types of poverty. We are called to care for one another especially for those who are experiencing some type of poverty. May we work to erase the poverty in our midst. May we lift up others in surprising ways and in serving others, may we find our own poverty lifted. It's not lost on me on this day when we read the parable of the workers in the vineyard that this is also a day that our nation mourns the passing of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who was an advocate for justice. I thank God for her strength and her witness that blessed so many of us. I'm grateful for her willingness to go into the vineyard and labor again and again. Brothers and sisters, as we lift up this message, this passage of justice, this passage of caring for the poor, may we also be thankful for those who live that example among us, particularly on this day, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I offer you this sermon on the Gospel of Matthew, in Jesus' name and for his sake. Now it's time to pray, and there are certainly many prayer concerns on our hearts. I invite you at this time to think of those who you know who are in need of strength for healing. I invite you to think of those who you know who are in need of comfort as they go through a time of grief or loss. I invite you to think of those who are rejoicing because of a birthday or an anniversary or some other success in life. And I invite you to think of our community as a whole as we deal with yet another act of violence uh, last night at the mall, um, very distressing. So there are many reasons to pray. And in these quiet moments, I invite you to lift all of those things that we have just mentioned in your personal prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for your generosity. We thank you, Lord, for your expansive justice. We thank you, Lord, for calling us to walk in your footsteps, even when that path is difficult and even rocky. Lord, you have heard our prayers that we have lifted, those who are sick, and those who are struggling, those who are weeping, and those who are rejoicing, gracious God. We lay these prayer requests at the foot of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And together we pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Sister Tammy. Thank you to everyone on the inside here who has made worship happen. And thank you to those on the outside, uh, our parking lot attendants who, who take care of all that happens out there. Uh, a few announcements. Uh, I know both of our churches, West Sign and College Hill, I know that our office staff has been sending out uh, electronic announcements to you. Um, so if you haven't checked those recently, you might want to look for those. Um, of particular note, uh, please know that uh, for all the plastic that we have been saving over all these many months, next Sunday you'll have a, an opportunity to drop some of that off here at College Hill. So uh, bring it with you when you come to worship next Sunday. And at the conclusion of parking lot worship, uh, it will be collected as you exit uh, behind the church building. There will be a bin set up, um, and, uh, and, and it, should be, it should be pretty easy if you're ready to just, just drop it off. Please make sure that it is clean, that it has been sorted, uh, that you take out the stuff that's not acceptable. Uh, there are videos on YouTube telling you about that in our, in our recorded worship services. Uh, there are lists in your builder newsletters about what you can and cannot um, uh, bring for the recycling. So that's next Sunday, we will we'll collect the batch. I also want to note that on Saturday, um, there will be a, a, a virtual Zoom uh, workshop put on by the Eastern Region of Moravian Women. This is their annual workshop and they've taken it online. We only just heard about it a couple of days ago, so I apologize for the late notice. But again, the flyer for that has been emailed to you. And uh, this is a, a really neat opportunity to, to participate, even if that's something you haven't joined in regularly on. Uh, because it's virtual, everyone uh, does have an opportunity. So uh, again, please refer to uh, announcements as you receive them. Please check your email. As we draw our worship to a close today, um, I pray that we've all been inspired and that our closing hymn will uh, continue us and launch us on our way. It's hymn 696, Today We All Are Called to Be Disciples. <laughs>
and sisters, as we leave this place, may our Lord Jesus Christ go before you to guide you, be within you to empower you, be behind you to justify you, and be above you to bless you. He who lives and reigns with God the Father and the Holy Spirit, one forevermore. Amen. Go in peace.